In this lesson, we're going to describe the differences between the types of cloud computing. If once again, we go and check out the AZ900 skills that are tested, we're really focusing on these five skills that are assessed. Define cloud computing, describe public cloud, describe private cloud, describe hybrid cloud, and compare and contrast the three types of cloud computing. So that's the focus for this particular lesson. Now I've talked a bit before about what is the cloud and the idea of the benefits of the cloud, that elasticity, that agility, the high availability. But I focused on cloud Azure, the public cloud. But if I really think about the cloud, there are particular properties that we think about that define the cloud. There are key principles. Now a key principle is around pooling resources. I.e. I don't want islands. I don't want, hey, this group of servers and this storage is for this particular group of people. Then another little island over here and another one over there. It's very inefficient. They might have busy times that are different from each other and they always have a spare amount of capacity. So if I have hundreds of islands, that spare capacity really is quite high. There's a lot of wasted space and it limits any particular island from kind of peaks. If I pull all the resources together, instead of having a hundred islands, I just bring all of that resource together. Now I have this massive amount of potential capacity and if one business group is having a quiet time, another one can really leverage that. So that pooling of resource gives us this fantastic elasticity that workloads can take advantage of. Then there's a whole idea of self-service. I don't want to have to go to some administrator and say, hey, please go and create me a virtual machine. I want the idea of self-service. Now self-service still needs controls. So often we think about certain maybe quotas. I give them a cloud of a certain size to control, hey, how much resource are they consuming? There may be the idea of certain policies or standards or templates that they can actually leverage. But the whole point here is it's this on demand. They go and provision things as they need to. There are gonna be things like showback. I can show them what they're using. Maybe it's also chargeback is another important aspect. There's also things like separating of networking. There's a, there's a whole bunch of different aspects, but we have some of these key kind of tenants. I don't want islands. I want to pull the resources that gives me this great agility between everyone. So if we have this idea of the cloud and some of those key tenants, well then I can offer that from different places. Now the obvious one we think about when I think about what is a cloud, absolutely, I think about the public cloud. E.g. Azure. Azure is an example of a public cloud. This is typically the most complete offering. Again, when we talk about the idea of a cloud, there's a certain set of capabilities we expect. Now, a lot of those capabilities are actually exposed via the management infrastructure that sits around it that exposes these concepts of clouds, of quotas, of self-service, of showback, of chargeback, of offering different types of service. And if I think about a public cloud offering, that's really gonna have the most complete set of capabilities to meet all of those definitions of the cloud, to have true software defined networking, to have true rich policy capabilities and showback and chargeback and all of those different role based access control elements we would expect. Also, for me as a company, well this is gonna be true OPEX. I really am just paying for what I use. Remember also, this is primarily accessed over the internet. 
Now, as we talked about in previous lesson, I can, from my on-premises, have like a site-to-site -site VPN. I can have a point-to-site VPN for a particular user. I can use things like ExpressRoute for a private actual network connection, not even encrypting a tunnel over the internet. But that's a very common pattern. We think about a public cloud, we're offering it over the internet. And with the public cloud, we really think about it is just limitless. We think about many regions. I, I can provision services in a lot of different places. And many regions, there are many services that I can pick from. I'm not limited to VMs or a container. I can have artificial intelligence services. I can have managed Postgres or MySQL. I have born in the cloud Cosmos DB databases. Huge range of capability. Storage from hard disk drive based to NVMe, super low latency capabilities. I have the ability to have services offered out to the internet, offered privately, geographically distributed. Just a fantastic set of capabilities available to me. And again, there's this very strong idea of governance, policies, role-based access control, budgets to control actually what I can spend. But I can also have private cloud. Absolutely on premises, I have the idea of a private cloud. I think about, well, I had those physical servers. So I can think, okay, well, we had those physical boxes that were running some kind of hypervisor. A key definition here about that private cloud would then be the management infrastructure you put on top of it. So There's gonna be a certain management set of software that I leverage that would expose to the end user portal that would enable those clouds of different quotas and different types of offering to actually be leveraged. So I can still create this idea of a certain set of service I want to offer to different groups of the business. So as a business unit person, I'll see certain services offered to me, I'll have a certain amount of quota. But here's the thing, although as a particular business unit, I might see a particular set of service. And as a business unit, maybe I pay for what I use. As a company, this is CapEx. I'm buying those servers. I have to go pre-buy, I have to buy the licenses. I have to purchase all of those things. And once again, I have a certain fixed set of services I'm gonna offer for a duration of years. But, I am running my own servers. So I have full flexibility within the capabilities of whatever management stack I'm running that is providing that private cloud set of capabilities. Now, one of the things we will see later on is Azure, for example, well, they actually have the ability to extend and enable services on premises. You'll hear things, for example, about Azure Stack, which has different types and Azure Arc, which brings Azure management capabilities from Azure, so a single pane of glass. It can actually bring different types of Azure services built on top of Kubernetes, could be app services, could be data services, could be AI services. So I actually get a consistent, not only management infrastructure, but also consistent services between the public and the private cloud. Which brings us to the idea of hybrid. And a hybrid really just means we're using both. We're using a private cloud and we're using a public cloud, often seamlessly. I might think about I'm offering a certain service from my on-premises private cloud, but in busy times, I'm actually gonna burst up into the public cloud. I might have some global load balancer to distribute my workload, so it can normally point to on-premises, but in these busy times, or if there's a failure, well, now I go and spin things up in the public cloud, that consumption base, so I only pay for it when I need it, so I go and burst out into the public cloud. 
maybe some services, I might have an anchor. We talk about anchors. Maybe I've got some mainframe workload I can't move to the cloud. So some things I still need to run on premises, but other services I can move out in the cloud. So I'll have a combination of them. But we think about, I don't want to use completely different tooling. So this is where I think, oh, okay, things like Azure Arc, I can have the Azure management, the resource-based access control, the policies, the whole governance model, and then bring the services as well to my on-premises. So as a developer, for example, I don't care. I work a certain way and it can really run anywhere I want. That's the best type of hybrid cloud where I, as a user of the service, do not care if it's running in my private cloud or if it's running in the public cloud. So I get a lot of flexibility here. I might have data requirements, regulatory requirements that say you're not allowed to run in the cloud, public cloud. Now that's a lot less common today, but it may still happen. Well, then I want to run a private cloud, but I still want the features that I'm used to. It might be I need to operate in a country where maybe there's not an Azure region. Oh, I can use something like Azure Stack. Azure Stack Hub. Azure Stack Edge, Azure Stack HCI, different, maybe it's a complete rack with Azure Stack Hub, maybe it's single boxes with Azure Stack Edge, maybe it's my own infrastructure running a, a special Azure brand of the hypervisor and software-defined networking and storage and other administrative controls with Azure Stack HCI. So I can run those where I need to run it on-premises, but other times I'll go and use the public cloud. So those are really the different types of cloud. A lot of companies want that consistent model, consistent policy, consistent everything else. And I can get that through services like Azure and Azure Stack and Azure Arc, where probably my primary scenario will be running things in the public cloud. But there might be times, maybe because of the latency, there's still a certain distance between maybe an on-premise location and the cloud's data centers, I want to run it on premise. Maybe it's artificial intelligence scanning a work line, looking for safety issues or sensors. I need to react super quick. I want to run those workloads at the edge very close. Hey, I'll, I'll run it in my private cloud. So I can run things using my infrastructure. I can run things in the public cloud. I can use that hybrid approach as well. So those are really the three types of cloud computing we're going to see. And our big focus here, obviously, is going to be the public cloud and using Azure.